Hello, and uh, it's Food Fridays, and it's I Bring It Every Day, and I'm Kelly, and thank you so much for coming in, everybody. See some people here? Thank you so much. All right, so I saw, oh, we saw Moises, and we have Katrina. Good to see you. Welcome in. Yes, thank you so much for coming. And uh, I see, oh, you're putting the little one to bed. Aw. Well, I hope she's... Uh, is she, is she have a good day? And we got Angela's Precious World. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. All right now. Oh, look who's here. Okay, Angela say hey. And there's Simone Watchman. Yay! I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> How are you doing? Yes. Same something wrong? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, got it. Got it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slow. I'm like, uh. Oh, you know what? I have a bad background. I got to fix that. <laughs> I just noticed what I did. Mm. I gotta, I get, yeah, that's a little bit busy. But Katrina made it. So thanks, Katrina. <laughs> yes, we got Bonnie. Hello. Hi, Bonnie. Yes. Yeah, I got to fix my background. I, I, I'll have to take care of that. That's not good. Um, I meant to put the, uh, you know, I usually have my, uh, what's that called? The, uh, it's called confetti. Oh. And, and I don't know why it, it went over to this. <laughs> But like weird things happen. Let's see if this will do it. Yeah, if I got it. Yes. But anyway, well, thank you guys so much for coming. So as you can see uh, from the description, uh, we're going to do, you know, for a while there, we we were doing make fast food at home <laughs> kind of a thing or take out at home. So we're going to try the fish sandwich that one of the uh, famous, one of the famous uh, restaurants does. So we're going to do that just for funsies and uh, see how that goes. <laughs> but we're gonna make it from scratch. And as you know, that's my rant uh, for 2023. And uh, we're gonna take it into 2024 and, and uh, into the future. And we're just saying, please, if you can, it takes some planning, but try to buy as fresh as you can. Now we don't live, we're, very, we're landlocked where we are. So we have to buy frozen a lot of times, which is a pain, but it is what it is. <laughs> And so, yeah, there's that. So um, anyway, but like, oh, this background's gonna drive me crazy. I gotta fix this. <laughs> it's like, it's so bad. So anyway, let me fix this. Yeah, it's not pretty at all. But anyway, yeah, let's go back to this. We'll try this one. Yeah, that's much better. Ah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you don't. Okay, so tell us why, Bonnie. I wanna know. I wanna know. We got Manny Michelle yes. Grand Good to see you. Oh yeah, we have a lot of people. Hey. DJ's in. Let me put this down. Hello. Who else? Aisha's in. Oh, hello. Peace. B's filling up, uh, cutting up fabric all day for his son's new punching bag. Oh, you're actually sewing that. Wow. That's no, impressive. He's, he's just cutting up fabric. Oh, just for fun. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not fun, but you know. And hi, Zoila. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so Lisa's here. I mean, hey, Zoila. Good oh, to see you. Lisa Nitz. Oh, Lisa Nitz. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We got Bonnie's Corner. Hello. Okay. Hello. I miss a few people. Yeah. Okay. And then hold on. Now, somebody said fish. We have a squirrel raid. We got to talk about Knit Pearl Squirrel okay. with Granny D. Thompson. Woo, you have a long name. <laughs> squirrel raid. Hello, Kelly and all. Thank you. Oh, and your hands are sore. So you need better scissors or you have to sharpen your scissors. Yeah, yeah that's really the, the deal. Yeah. And there's VJ. She's raiding. We got Joy Joa. Uh oh, hit the wrong button there. I don't want to put you in timeout. <laughs> we have Joa. Who's Joy. Ah, oh, jo oh, okay. <laughs> Joa. Threw me off there. Yeah. She so she never bonded me like since she was a kid or. Was oh, fish. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I can tell you, being from Pittsburgh, which is extremely landlocked, fish was terrible. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say terrible, like it smelled terrible. We never had fresh fish where like you're not you know what it took me i was probably uh 16 years old by the time i had real fish mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 somebody said fish is not supposed to stink and i went oh wow because that's all i ever had in my whole life mm -hmm. just so anyway so that's probably why you hate it if yeah. you if you had the same situation that i had yeah. hi lisa <laughs> so anyway let me let me keep going uh, but good. We we just grew up on fish. Like my mom always made cod. Yeah. So that's how my whole fish, and then mm -hmm. going, you know, 
because I found better fish like in Maine and all those other places. Yeah. Tuna. Tuna's a yummy. Tuna. And then I, I became a big boy, started eating uh, sushi. Yes. And we do enjoy sushi. Let me see. We got Nana Michelle. And tuna guess. rolls. And tuna and rolls and things salmon, like that. Salmon. Cakes, salmon. Crab cakes. No snow cakes. Just salmon. salmon just, salmon. yep. Just salmon. I like, I like big pets. Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. oh, okay. In San Diego. Oh, had fresh fish. you had fresh fish. Wow. Then what's going on? Uh oh. See, now we have to talk about the, how was your mom cooking or whoever was cooking? Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we have to understand those things. You guys had fish markets. I know. We had like terrible a, fish markets. Like you guys I thought. Had a bay. Yeah. You had a bay. I mean, <laughs> we just had the rivers dirty. Yeah. The steel companies yeah. were dumping, dumping, dumping. We, we were fishing, doing catch and release because. You yeah, remember the Simpsons with the three eyes? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was us. Yes, never ate it. Wow. Okay, this is terrible. Okay, there's Lisa's link. Well, anyway, <laughs> so here's a funny story I have to tell you guys. And this is kind of, I had a little flashback. So when I was working at this insurance company uh, years ago, and we were in a big city in, in, Amer in America, and um, somebody, oh, I know what it was. One of the fast food restaurants had a hotline number. And so, and we were like, let's call and prank it, which is terrible. <laughs> like grownups, <laughs> let's call and prank it. Yes, yes, yes. Due to freshness in landlock, I buy frozen every time I go to the store. It smells like rotten fish. So I don't trust it. Yes, don't eat that. Yes, Nan, I'm going to show you. I got you. So anyway, so we decided to call um, the Golden Arches uh, hotline. And I said, okay, let's ask them what kind of fish is the filet of fish. <laughs> And everybody just looked at me like, what is wrong with you? And I said, I, well, I want to know. <laughs> at least it's not a fish eater. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yes, Squirrel Ray. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, long story short uh, was, um, does anybody know what kind of fish that uh, fast food restaurant makes for their sandwich? See if anybody can put it in the chat. And then Zoila says, if we can eat healthy with the fast food vibe, I'm for it. The kitties would be shocked. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, Bunny said cod. And that's what it is. So they said it's cod, most likely. Most and then, likely. no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> then the second choice would be haddock, which is basically cod again. <laughs> it's white fish, white fish, you know. Because it's it because cod is very, very thick. And, uh, and it holds its shape really nicely. And Moses' family used to eat a lot of, uh, what's that called? Cod. The, the the dish bacalao bacalao yeah bacalao Sorry. they eat bacal it's, it's... he's like the fake hispanic <laughs> like i know but i'm just saying well, like what had it in god doesn't well, cuz do i make bacalao i don't think so but anyway ask me. okay well anyway <laughs> bonnie mm -hmm. said she always gave her kids fish when they okay and everyone's saying hi so oh, there's the crochet queen hey <laughs> china so anyway, so that's the bottom line is that they use uh, cod or uh, haddock. So I went to the store and bought some haddock. And usually what I do is I go and I buy whatever's on sale. And they do have these bags of fish. I call them bags of fish. They're fillets. And what they do is they, they give you a pound usually in these bags. And then the bag might be $9.99, $10.99, $11.99, .99, whatever it is. And, then, and that's a good way to do the fish because, like I said, we're only two people. <laughs> so we have the world's smallest uh we don't need a whole ton you know but anyway so you're not allowed to have sharper scissors that's funny <laughs> you got the kids safety scissors dave yes says them oh okay yeah i understand that oh, we got kenneth Wilkerson. oh hello good to see you kenneth so anyway happy new year thank you yep. uh, so zoila's cooking for five people i'll be right back okay oh Aisha, i just had bacala yesterday yummy Okay. See, it's been a while since we've had it. Yeah, I don't, and I don't really make that, so that's part of the issue. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like a lot of the stuff we used to do is like it yeah. was so convenient where we lived. Uh, you know, in Philly. Yeah, we used to be able to get it, and yeah, here not so much. <laughs> yeah, so I don't. Think, uh, yeah. you don't think about those things that you grew up with as a kid that were so readily available. Yes. So what I'm going to do is, um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about. Um, Let's see. 
Oh, and someone did ask. So we're making the fish sandwich today. <laughs> oh, yes. So someone did ask that. In the, in the yeah, I, I think I did say okay. that. Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why I was, um, yeah, I just had it yesterday. That's cool. Oh, and then uh, let's see. And then Simone Watchman saying, I only eat fish fillet at McDonald's or <laughs> shake, but nothing else. Maybe mystery nuggets. <laughs> just remind me, uh, Samoan. I have a, I have a, I have a, a, a nugget story for you. Also, uh, <laughs> was it the dinosaurs or the boot? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's that. Everyone's saying hi. So anyway, um, so the sad news is, I don't. I'm not really good at frying. Like that is like my worst thing that I do. <laughs> and I try not to fry as much as possible. But what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to put I'm going to put half of the fish in the air fryer. Oh god, I'm scared. And then I'm going to do half the fish on the stove. But anyway, the first thing I want to talk about is the oil. So getting back to our our health journey that we're talking about. Um can anybody tell me what a good safe oil to use for frying is? <laughs> And see if anybody, I know, I know Nana Michelle knows. Let's see. Yes. You like haddock. Okay. Yeah. They taste the same, right? <laughs> they, they, yeah. It's the, to me, it's the same, same, same crap, same garbage. <laughs> it's like same stuff. <laughs> and we got Kenneth. Welcome in. Yes. So anyway, that's kind of the deal. <laughs> yes. Had to cover both lives. Oh my gosh. I know. Poor. Uh, yes. And I'll, oh, hug the munchkin for me. Yes. We enjoy the munchkin. Mommy says canola. No. So canola is not one of them. Uh, so here the, the thing is, and I, and I did not cover this well, or, and I'm going to revisit that at some point better. But yeah, there we go. Nana Michelle. Okay. So she says olive oil. Yep. Mm -hmm. Macadamia oil is a good one. Yep. High smoke point. That's a good one. Another one is avocado oil, which Moses, you have that over there. Right there. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Here's avocado oil. Now, this is something new to me. I never saw this before, but I'll, I'm going to make myself big. Yes, vegetable oil. Let's see. No olive oil. Yes, the olive oil does burn. Yeah, it has a lower smoke point. I don't know what that number is, but, you know, you can look that up. And uh, But olive oil is, is better when you don't fry with it <laughs> because it does burn. It smokes. Yeah. And canola used to be engine oil. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, coconut oil is another one. That one's decent. Yep, avocado. Yep, you got it. Those are the ones. So, like I said, it's very, like, eating is definitely challenging. And so, you know, I'm going to just give you some ideas on what to use. So here's the avocado oil. And uh, it, it, it's, uh, it has a 500 Fahrenheit smoke point, which is pretty good. Perfect for dressing, marinade, sauteing, grilling, roasting, and baking. All right, so there's that one. So uh, Granny D says she's never heard of macadamia oil. Actually, neither have I. I just, yeah, no, that, so I've seen it, but I don't see it in the stores. And that's, yeah, so I'm going to stick. Now, the other one that they talk about, and I don't know if you know about this one, Nana Michelle. I'm going to try this one today. Grapeseed oil. And it has a high, high heat cooking. Perfect for stir frying, deep frying, and baking. And it's supposed to be light. So usually what you want to do is you want to use the most natural oil that you can find. What, so that's, you know, so basically olive oil comes from olives. You know, they squeeze them and process them. They, and they, it's, it's the least processed. You want to go for the least processed. Coconut oil is also good because it's not really uh, processed heavily. So anyway, so this is what we're going to do. All right. So let me make myself small, small. Mama says she likes to cook with avocado oil. <laughs> yes, yeah. And and the flavor is not too bad. You know, olive oil sometimes, I'm not olive oil, coconut oil mm -hmm. is very, very, uh, has a very strong taste or odor. So, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it for baking. Like, I think that would be horrible for baking, unless you want coconut flavor. But if you didn't want coconut flavor, I think you'd be in trouble. So anyway, so what, I, what I'm going to show you here. Nana Sasha, she gets her uh, macadamia oil online. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah. And is it, is it Amazon, as they say in England? Amazon? Amazon? All right, I'm going to move this over this way. Move this over a little bit here. Hopefully this is good. There we go. 
Got to get this out of the way. So anyway, so what I have here is I have some panko breadcrumbs in there. And, um, and then I have an egg that I'm going to just beat a little bit. And then I'm just going to, uh, oh my goodness. I'm going to coat the fish <laughs> with the, I'm going to season the fish, coat it with a little bit of panko breadcrumbs and then fry. So this is going to be similar. So the, so the, the fish sandwich that you see at these restaurants, it's fried. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, okay. Buttery flavor. Nice. Ooh, that sounds good. And that is really cool. Samoa Watchman's in California. He has an olive tree. He's that is try, awesome. He's gotta try and make his own uh, oil next season. You know, <laughs> that, yes. Now, do you have? Do you have like a, a what's that called? Peach trees, like a lot of Californians. I've seen peaches and lemons and, and avocados. In avocados yeah. in the tree in the people's yards. So I was wondering if you have those. That's really good. So anyway, let me get into the shot. There we go. So I'm just beating the egg here. So Bonnie says she does use uh, vegetable oil in her baked goods. Yeah. So I'm going to talk a little bit about vegetable oil. Hopefully my pages all stand. <laughs> I have so many windows open right now. I'm trying not to like kill you guys with too much information. But there's just certain things that I want you to, to think about. Let's see here. Uh, let's talk about. Oh, hey, Laura. Good to see you. Okay, here we go. Healthiest cooking oils. So let me go to this screen here. Well, while I'm while I'm kind of, uh, I'll present, <laughs> and I'll show you. This is what the this is what the AMA says are good cooking oils to choose from. Let's see if this makes any sense. Let's see. Share. Oh, hold on. Wrong button. Share screen. And share screen. Here we go. The base says lots of orange, lemons, avocado trees, and Chinese apples. Yeah, that's really interesting. So anyway. Lydia's in. Oh, hey, Lydia. Good to see you. So these are the healthiest oils. This is from the amacardiology.com. And they're saying this is for heart health. And I'm going to, so while we're talking about this, uh-oh, Kelly, add to stage. Here we go. <laughs> There we go. All right. Now I'm going to see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, hopefully you can see this. I'm going to stretch this a little bit here. So these are the healthiest cooking oils, according to the AMA, cardiology. They're saying extra virgin olive oil. It's one of the healthiest options when considering which oil is best for a heart patient. It's packed with antioxidants that can improve circulation, promote healthy gut, boost your immune system, and reduce inflammation. Reach for extra virgin olive oil because it contains more antioxidants than refined olive oil. Then avocado oil, we talked about that. And they say the smoke point is 520 degrees, which is pretty cool. Mono, monounsaturated fats and has a neutral avocado-like taste. And it, they say studies suggest it might be anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and have heart health benefits. They also mentioned safflower. I don't know. I've never seen safflower oil, but they're saying it's neutral. It has a high smoke point of uh, 510 degrees and uh, et cetera. Then here's grape, oil, grape seed oil. Oh, they also said sesame oil. So sesame oil is also good for if you do any Asian inspired dishes like, like stir fries and teriyakis and things like that. That's a good thing to use. And they say that it's a uh, high in sesame oil or and sesame oil, which are antioxidants, which reduce heart cell damage. So that's pretty cool. Susan's in. Yep. Now here's the worst, they say. <laughs> um, canola, palm, vegetable, soybean, sunflower, I'll make it bigger, margarine, shortening, butter. Not the best. But to me, butter is pretty unprocessed. So I don't know. I I'm kind of fighting that one. Because <laughs> butter is very, very unprocessed. So anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. So just some things to think about since we're frying a little bit today. All right, so I'm going to take that in there. Ooh, okay. So let me see. I stopped sharing. Make sure I'm good here. Yes, I did. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the fish. And um, TGIF, oh, Shatika, good to see you. And we got uh, Suzanne, I think I saw, pop in. And uh, But anyway. I'm going to solo 
the food here. So this is this is the panko crumbs here. So next, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the fish. I got too much going on here. So the one thing that goes on these uh, McDonald's, this is this is a piece of haddock right there. It's got a little bit of a glare. Hopefully you can see that. It's not too bad there. But anyway, there's a there's a piece of haddock. And what I did was I dried it off. Because the main thing is uh, when it comes out of the freezer, it gets very, very damp. So you don't want to fry something that's got a lot of water in it. So one thing that you want to do is dry it off, which is what I did. And um, so I'm going to just cut. I'm going to cut a piece of this. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one part in the uh, fri fried in the oil on the stove, ugh, which I hate doing. <laughs> and then the second one I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the air fryer. And then we'll just see what happens. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, what did she say? Siri, oh my. Uh-oh, what happened? Oh, I, I yes, I cook with butter and I love it. And I don't rain stops. I'm going with what I like. I understand that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, butter, I think, is delicious. And when I was young, I didn't like butter. But as I got older, I love butter. So anyway, I'm just going to cut this piece of haddock here. You hear that? So, and there's still a lot of water coming out of this. Okay. Hey. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to get this part here done. And then, so you see, this is a pretty big piece of fish here. And we really, really cut the heck out of it. But you see how it is. So I'm going to cut these two pieces. Maybe I'll cut another little piece off of this one. So we're going to have one in the middle and one in the end here. And then I'm going to dry this off. I'm going to season it. And then we're going to put the first piece in the... Uh, in the air fryer. And then we're going to put the other one. I'm just going to use a paper towel. Try to take out as much water as possible. Because like I said, we're landlocked and we really get, I mean, our seafood's a little bit better uh, in, in Philadelphia, but I don't know. I think we're still too far. Like <laughs> we're still too far. Like Maryland, I think the seafood's better down there and Maine, which is, you know, mm -hmm eight, nine hours away. Massachusetts is another six hours away. It's too far. <laughs> so anyway, there's that. All right. So I'm just going to put a little salt and pepper on the fish. And then I'm going to put some seasoning on here also. So uh, in addition to the salt and pepper, I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm going to put uh, a little bit of garlic, I think. And I think that's it. I'm not going to do anything too crazy like with this. You know, but at least I'm going to try to get some flavor on this thing. <laughs> All right, so a little salt and pepper. She's going to take a few good pieces of homemade fried flounder. Ooh, yeah, and see, and I don't fry, so I'm not that good at it, you guys. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm like, boo, like that's not my best, you know, not my best work. <laughs> How's Dreamy? Good to see you. So that, like I said, I'm going to season this. I might put a little bit of, uh, I might put a little bit of, um, what's this called? The stuff that we bought, this stuff? Uh, turmeric. 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 Yeah, turmeric. <laughs> yeah, my, my husband, um, they say that turmeric's good for, uh, what's that called? Inflammation. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put, this is, a little, this is one of these, you know, mixed seasonings. This has garlic, cilantro, achote, some other stuff in there. And I'm just going to season this. And then I'm going to, you know, like I said, I'm going to run it through a little bit of egg. And then I'm just going to put it in the... Uh, Put the, put the uh, coating on it, the panko. I'm gonna put just a little bit of that. And uh, then we're going to see how this sandwich goes. But like basically the, the sandwich is not that fancy, you know. It's pretty basic, but I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, exotic ingredients here. It's a little bit exotic. And I'm just putting it on both sides. Just enough to try not to dye my hands orange today or yellow. But anyway, there it is. That's why I got my gloves on. But it's good for, you know, sanitation also. Chitika says she's got turmeric tea. Oh, now how's that? Ooh. And good to see you. Also, I I think I, I think I did say hi earlier. Okay. We're looking good. And I'll get back to the chat in just a little bit. You can keep going with the chat. And I, I'm, like I said, I'm going to try this. I'm going to turn on the oven. Start. Mm -hmm. Air fry. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Air fry. Start. Okay. Get that going. All right. And then I'm going to just uh, do a little uh, dredging. Let's see if I can get this through here. 
me grab this over here and put this over here. So anyway, these are the panko crumbs here. Yeah. And I'm just going to run this through. Let me see if I can do this without causing mayhem. <laughs> so anyway, there's the egg. And hopefully I won't dribble all over the place. But anyway, I, I, I beat the egg. I'm just going to dredge it through the egg first. Run it through the panko. Let me see if you can see that. Let me get a little closer. There we go. Yeah, I'm just running the fish through the panko. But it's all seasoned already. And I'm just going to let this sit for a second. Oops. There it is. Run it there. All right. So wait, but there's the panko. Okay, next piece. And dredge it through again. Yeah. Same thing. And I'm just gonna run it through the panko. So, like I said, I'm gonna do half in the uh, fry, you know, half on the stove and half in the uh, air fryer. So we'll see which one turns out better. I don't know. But I just got this air fryer just for funsies. Uh, we had one before, and it, it died. We we had we had like a like a breakage on the. Uh, no, that's called the the little handle. Yeah, the handle was terrible. Yep. So this piece, I'm gonna put this one in the. Then I'm gonna move this out the way. Hopefully, you can see me doing that. All right, looks pretty good. So anyway, so like I said, you know, try to avoid the vegetable oil because they say it's not as good for your heart as some of these natural oils. So that's one thing that you can do, you know, like we're, we're even though we're, like we're trying not to make New Year's resolutions because I don't think New Year's resolutions really help. Mm -hmm. But I think the number one thing that you could do for yourself is to cook at home as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. Oh, she could say that. Well, uh, she put, uh, people put mustard in the, the crispy crunchy. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And I also, you know, I forgot to do, I forgot to put some cornstarch in here. But anyway, oh, well, this won't be as exciting. And Bonnie <laughs> says the turmeric has no taste but has good benefits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. And Lisa is leaving us. Bye, Lisa. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good one. All right, I'm going to put all this in the stove here. All right. So I think that's it. So we're ready to go. I'm going to put this on the sink. And, uh... So, and, uh, Bonnie says she only uses, uh, vegetable oil, really, for her taco shells. She uses what? Uh, vegetable oil for her taco oh, shells. For the taco shells. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds really good. So, all right. So I'm going to take these two pieces of fish. I'm going to throw them in the basket. And I hope, uh, these come out okay. i got to keep an eye. <laughs> so anyway, so I got the air fryer going. And then I'm going to... Do this one on the stove and fingers crossed it works. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to stick this on here. So this is a cast iron. Uh, what is that called? A cast iron Ooh. skillet. Thank you. <laughs> cast iron skillet. I'm going to turn this on. Front. Make sure I got the front. I'm going to let that go. And I'll, I'm going to use my grapeseed oil. I'm going to put some in there. Well, actually, I'm going to let this heat up just a second. Mm -hmm. And I, I might need another paper towel, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll grab one of these. And I'm going to use this. My little pinchers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is my tiny little Griswold skillet that I've been hanging on to. <laughs> but I'm going to clean him just a little bit before I put him in to fry. And then we'll see how that goes. But let's see. I'm going to go into the, uh, let's go back to the chat while we're going. Yeah. Oh, okay. So vegetable oil. Yep. I got that. And good night, Lisa. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. All right. Okay. So now, so anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to check on this. Oh, it's still going. It's looking pretty good. So what, anyway, so usually what goes with these sandwiches, you make your own um, tartar sauce. Now you can buy tartar sauce, but tartar sauce is really, really easy to make. And basically tartar sauce is mayonnaise, a <laughs> little bit of relish, or you could cut up pickles. 
and then you know put a little salt and pepper in there and then some people put a little splash of ketchup but you know you don't have to or mustard, or mustard. yep so that's basically tartar sauce and we'll do that you know while we're waiting yeah and that's kind of it like that's like all you need and then i have a piece of cheese kind of ready for the uh sandwich and that's it so this is like a pretty simple meal and i think i'm, I'm spending more time talking than i am actually making it <laughs> right <laughs> yes so anyway there's that all right so let's see how this goes almost a little warm here Let me warm it up probably should have had this going first but but we'll see how it goes but the uh Oh, we got uh, Zach Kyle. Hey, good to see you. KK's Travel and Education. Good to see you. Good morning. And Bonnie loves her cast iron. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, it is morning, isn't it? <laughs> there it is. That's good. All right, now. Good morning. Yeah, cast iron's good. So the other thing is, in the description, I've been ranting for a very, very long time about um, nonstick coating in pans. So... Yes. Oh, sorry. Good evening. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine, Kyle. Uh, but the number one thing is, um, oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? Yeah. So th the main thing that I just want to say to everybody is stick to the uh, stick to the stainless steel pans, stick to the, uh, try to avoid the nonstick pans. And I have a link in the description that talks a little bit about um, what they call the PFOA uh, chemicals that are used to line the pans and you avoid it whenever you are using, and this is going to be hard to see because this is kind of white on white, but I'm putting mayonnaise in here. A little bit of that. Hey, Drizzy. But he's in a restaurant, so he can't. Oh, so what do you, what are you eating? Yeah, I know it's something good. No, he can't hear, so. Okay. Well, anyway, well, you got to let us know what, what you're having for dinner. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, mayonnaise in here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> and actually, if you wanted to grab some mustard, I forgot the mustard. I can put some in there. But I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, dill in here. This is like a uh, relish. And then uh, if you want to put a little splash of mustard. Yeah, and then, th then this is the tartar sauce. So it's pretty simple. I mean, this is like bing, bang, boom, it's done, you know? We'll put a little salt and pepper in there. Yeah, if you want to do the uh, Dijon, I'll put a little Dijon in there. Yeah, that sounds good. And then I think we're good to go. And I'm just going to, so we have some Dijon mustard. And I'm kind of shaking this around. This stuff always separates, I noticed. And this is actually pretty fresh, you know, but I just went, uh-oh. Okay, let's see. So anyway, but we'll keep going. Put a little splash of that in there. Uh-oh, if I, oh, this isn't open. This isn't the one that's open. <laughs> There's one that, yeah. Oh. I was wondering why I couldn't get that open. Yeah, we have one that's open in there. Yes, and we got Indy, good to see you. Yes, and we want to know, inquiring minds want to know what Drew's eating. Oh, sushi and hibachi, what? Shrimp and scallops, wow, that sounds really good. Okay, you are fancy. <laughs> and I'll give you this. All right, there you go, thank you. I was wondering why this wasn't open. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put a little splash of mustard in here. There we go. Boom. All right. We're done. So that's going to be the, here you go. So that's the tartar sauce. Bam. Very, very easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stir it up here. So there it is. And that's it. Tartar sauce. But bam, you know, that's really easy. Okay. All right. Let's see how this is going. Oh, the fish is, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Mm. Oh, I'm going to have to turn that over. Hold on. <laughs> oh, this came out nice. Mary King again. Okay. Let me turn this down. Yeah, so is Indy. You know, I think the fish in the oven is done. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. What happened? Oh, you don't have a wrench. Who, who you have a troll? Oh, they, we do. Yes. Yeah, Moses. Go back up. Go back up. I did. No, no. Go back up. You'll I, see. I, I saw the deleted messages by Katrina. Yeah, but okay. Oh, so it's gone. Okay. Yeah, it's already gone. Oh, it's gone. Okay. It, of course it happened when I was... Of course. <laughs> it happens when I'm not. I know. I'm like, oh, man. 
Oh well, it is what it is. But you know, people people are prepared. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I swear, as soon as you as soon as you disappear, that's what happens. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'm just cleaning out my little pan here. So you see a little smoke. All right, there we go. Okay, this is how you season your pan. My pan was not well seasoned, so I'm gonna do it right now. But this is one way you can do it. Okay, there we go. All right. So now, yeah, I see, I see it on the stream yard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. But yeah. Yep. All right. So anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in there. We'll get it going, and hopefully you'll see how we'll see the difference between the two. And uh, and I think this is just about done. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I. There we go. Oh, this is ready. Okay. Here goes. This will probably take two seconds. All right. You can see that. Turn that down a little bit. Mm hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see. Yep. Now, right, here we go. So, this won't take but a moment. <laughs> And actually, if you want to grab two rolls, I forgot the rolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hamburger ones are there. And then I think we're good to go. Yes. It's up, well, it's up to you. All right. Here's a plate. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm already, I'm ready. Because <laughs> this is going fast. I knew this was going to go fast. Ooh, that's really going fast. Okay. Yeah, I know. I got to take this out. I'm just going to put it on the plate. Okay. All right, hurry. All right. Yeah, no, just get it. All right. Off and cancel. And stop. Cancel. There you go. Thank you. All right. Turn this over. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, this is done. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. That's looking good. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, am I ready for the new year? Um, not yet, uh, Drew. <laughs> I mean, we're doing okay. Yeah, we've just been trying to, you know, keep it going, keep it going, right? Yes. Oh, this is really good. All right. I think we're done. I can't believe like this. These both cook so fast. Well, fish because it's very, very low mm -hmm. does cook fast. But uh, there it is. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is beautiful. So the air fryer did cook a little bit. It cooks a little bit too fast sometimes for my taste. <laughs> but it's looking pretty good there. Yeah. All right. Let's give that a couple more seconds. That's a little bit thicker. So I'll show you. Anyway, the first... So this is the one from the air fryer. And there it is. And we just put it on the roll right there. But that's the two pieces of fish there. And then the second roll, we just happen to have these hoagie rolls. And um, we're going to use those today. But uh, then we're going to try the one from the, uh, the deep fry. Well, deep fry such as it is. But yeah, they, they, they came out okay. Like I'm just like, wow. Sometimes you just sometimes you just get oh, can you throw that in mm -hmm. Sometimes you get real lucky. You get real fortunate and things work out. <laughs> but uh oh look at that. That is beautiful. I think we are done. Let me just do I'm gonna turn it just one on the other side one more time. So this is the reason why you want to make sure that you have your um oh can I have some more paper towels too? I forgot I gotta have to drain this a little bit. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but we're done. This is basically it. Mm -hmm. I can't believe no, it. Please. Yeah, um, yeah, you'll be another bit. Please. But I'll just uh, I'm gonna drain this and then we're good to go. But yeah, this is it. So see how pretty this is. I'm gonna turn this off actually. So I think we are finny. Now actually, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna hold that. 
All right, I'm gonna just I'm just putting this in the uh, paper towels, and I'm gonna just let this. Okay, so there it is. Bam. Let me put that a little closer. But there it is. Yep. So I'm gonna let that let me let that dry. You just let that, that you know, let the oil roll off of there. But I'll show you this again. But this is the one that we did in the air fryer. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, so it's amazing how quick and easy. So I think the longest the amount of cooking that I did was about 15 minutes. <laughs> it took me about 15 minutes to actually cook this. So oh, it looks good. Time. Yes, thank same you. Amount of time you got to wait in line to get it. Yeah, so this is this is kind of like a McDonald's visit. I mean, it's probably a little bit slower. I mean, I did I talk too much, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna break myself down. Okay, so anyway, so that's it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna um, I should move. I should switch this over to here, but you just gotta be careful because it's really hot. Now the other thing that you can do is uh, McDonald's does put cheese on their filet of fish you can or you, you don't if you want to but i don't know how you feel do you want to try the uh do you want um yeah it's just a little tartar sauce on there. or you just want tartar sauce yeah that's no, what i figured no cheese, no cheese. <laughs> but anyway but i have some provolone that i found <laughs> oops there we go there's some provolone there we go there so there's the provolone and that looks pretty good and that's a nice mild cheese like I, i'm not a fan of american cheese because it doesn't have a lot of milk in it <laughs> at least i don't think it does i don't know american cheese is kind of scary so anyway let me give you a little bit of tartar sauce sorry uh bring that the other way <laughs> okay and then over here and I'll, I'll make this big again all right well solo okay and tell me how uh, there we go that's perfect yeah now how much do you want well you 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 put it on here, just use this. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just just put what you want on there. I, I'm not a big, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big uh, mayonnaise person. Yeah. But anyway, there it is. I like it light. Yep. So he's putting some on there. Over there. Yeah. There we go. That's it. That kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> That's it. I just want to make sure you're in the shot. Okay. okay. All right. Now. Okay. Now, okay. Now, stay right there. Mm -hmm. Stay, I got it. Just stay right there. Stay right there. Okay. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta be the director. <laughs> I'm the director. So anyway, so now what I'm doing is I'm just. Like I guess we had this nice. And we drained it of all the fat, which is good. Now come. There we go. Perfect. All right. So there. It, uh -oh, there it is. So there's the uh, piece of fish. Let go. Got it. <laughs> So anyway, there's 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 the one that we fried on the uh, stove. Yep. So there it is. Bam. All of fifteen minutes and nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. But at least you know who made it. Right. Okay. So now uh, are you good? Yep. All right. That's beautiful. Is yours. You can just yeah, just lay it down. I'm good. Okay. Awesome. Now let me let me change spaces here. Okay. All right. Yep. So anyway, so there it is. So. The, the 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 bottom line is, and this is a little messy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this down. But you see how easy it was. Um, we used you know real basic oils, and most of the oils that you can find are pretty uh, easy to find in the stores nowadays. Like you can find all those fancy oils and things like that. So yum, yeah. So let's see what uh, Mister I Bring It says <laughs> if he likes it. But it's, I'm sure it'll be good. But, you know, you can use your favorite condiments if you like ketchup or whatever, whatever, whatever. That's what we have. So there's a Miss Donia. Good to see you. Good to see you. Saying hello. Samoan saying, yeah, yeah, look, I mean, and that didn't take much. And like I said, I used the olive. Uh, no, this one I used the grapeseed oil. Mm -hmm. There we go. I used this today. The grapeseed oil. Oh, hot. Be careful. No, it was like hot from my Oh, okay. Is it? How is it? No, no, no. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Okay. All right. So anyway, so there it is. Now, now the other thing I wanted to show you. So like, let's see, let's go back. So we talked about the oils, you know, some of the effects. I have to make sure that I put the correct. Um, I have to put the new link for that into the uh, description. But uh, 
but these were, you know, from the AMA is saying, like, these are the oils that you want to try. Or, you know, these are the best for you. So avocado, grapeseed, olive oil. Um, avocado oil has a high smoke point. The grapeseed oil has a pretty good smoke point, so it doesn't burn. And, you know, olive oil is great, but it does burn. And it's not the best for, like, high, what's it called? High temperature things like baking and things like that. But, you know, it's it's great. You know what I mean? So let me see. I'm going to go, before I do this, I'm going to go back to the, oh, is he going to compare? Oh, you want to try a little piece? Yeah, I'll take a piece. Okay. Yeah, yeah maybe we'll do that. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, like I said, you don't have to eat the whole thing because I know we, we already had a little, we had a late snack again. So anyway, so here's the piece from the air fryer. <laughs> so anyway, so there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and tell, yeah, so that's, that's a good question, Anna Michelle. I appreciate that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh, thank you, Drunken Chef. Good to see you. You had to re I know. Isn't it terrible? Makes you sad, like the whole situation. So anyway, so we made so we made the, the fake fish sandwich at home. We made the real fish sandwich at home that you can get uh, in the fast food place. And really, it only took us 15 minutes. <laughs> like, I, like I said, I spent probably 30 just talking about it, which is way bad. So anyway, so we did that. So what do you think? I think I like the grapeseed a little bit. I think the I think see I hate to say that the oil makes it taste better, but it yeah, really does. It's, it's it's like is it mild or is it can you taste the I difference think, between no, I, yeah I, I can actually. It's kind of weird. Like what do you mean? Like what do you think? What's the difference? Like yeah, he's chasing. He's gonna tell us. <laughs> well, you can almost see the difference. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, and also you had the see the problem is the one side of the the, the one that I fried in the in the pan this was not what, as dry. It's a little juicier. It's a little juicier, but, but this it, one's drier. What and and that was more the tail, you know, the mm -hmm. smaller end of it. Yeah. So you know, I think if I was to do that again, I would use the thicker, um, the thicker end of the of the, of the haddock. Mm -hmm. I just use the whole fish just to kind of you know get it gone. But like that's the whole thing. I would say use the thicker end. And he said that the, the grapeseed oil was a little bit juicier because the air fryer, the only thing about it is um, I, and I didn't roll, I did usually I would either spray some oil on the fish or roll whatever I put Like the air fryer can be very drying because yeah. it has a fan. Like there's no moisture. To there's it. no moisture. Right. So you almost have to put um, like some kind of, you have to, you know, put it in there. So anyway, but anyway, thanks for coming. Drunken chef. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. So anyway, so that's kind of what we're what we're trying to do. But so the bottom line is, um, you know, try these more natural oils. Try to avoid the uh, pans, you know, the the pans with the, with the nonstick coating, and also, you know, try to buy as fresh as you can, as locally as you can, uh, because what you find is, well, like I said, I'll give you a prime example. So we we went to a big box store, and we said, oh, let's get some bananas or something. Remember that time? And they looked like they were. The weirdest color like they were just they they had you know they kept they come from arkansas i'm just gonna <laughs> come from arkansas we are hundreds and hundreds of miles from arkansas and they were just like the lettuce was dried out like everything was dried out and, we, and they had corn at that time sweet corn in the uh in the husk and that was dried out and it just everything just looked like it had been through it you know so if you're if you're closer to home you're what you're going to find is that your food is going to be a little bit fresher you know what I mean? So that's just something to think about. And in the summertime, especially like on the East Coast, we're, we're very, you know, we're in the middle of winter right now. So it's kind of brutal. <laughs> but anyway, but let's see. So um, one thing I just wanted to just throw out there. So we talked about the oils. And I'm going to re I'm going to reshare this again. Let's see. I'll, I'll show you, you know, what, what they suggest, you know, as the best oils to, to choose. And then you know, we'll we'll revisit that, and, you know, just so that for some of the people who uh, weren't here earlier. So here's this. So here's here's the these are the ones that they say these are the worst ones, <laughs> and the reason why is because they're more artificial. A and so now, the, and they were saying that in terms of heart health, these are the ones that they say are not as heart healthy. So the canola, palm, vegetable oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil. They even say coconut oil here and butter. Now, butter because of the cholesterol, I'm guessing. Sesame oil, they're saying, is great, you know, for uh, a more natural oil. 
grapeseed oil, which is what I used when I made the uh, fish sandwich here. These all have high smoke points, and then they have omega omega six fatty acids, vitamin E, things like that. It's good for your heart, good for sautéing. Um, safflower, high smoke point, um, five hundred and ten degrees. Uh, let's see, high in unsaturated fatty acids, good for your heart. Avocado, same thing, high smoke point, and uh, has a good flavor, but also ha may have some anti-inflammatory antioxidants for your heart health. So things like that. And then extra virgin olive oil. It's not the best for frying, but it's great for just about everything else. And, you know, it gives you, they say may give you antioxidants, which can improve circulation, promote healthy gut, boost your immune system, reduce inflammation. Bam. So there you go. So that's, you know, just some things to think about. And then let me just uh, see. Oh, and I forgot to put that back in there. But anyway, I got rid of that one. So anyway, so we're, we're going to revisit that. And then the other thing that I saw is um, it, we talked a little bit about um, one of the rants that I have is like we're trying to avoid the high fructose corn syrup. But another rant <laughs> that I've been doing, and I've been trying to do this with my husband, is talking about orange juice. Like orange juice is one of those things that, it's if you have any kind of sugar intolerance or things like that, it's really not the best for you for blood sugar things. But I'll give you, I'll show you this thing that I found uh, today. And um, let's see if it's on the screen. I'm going to make sure I got it in here. Hang on. Okay, add. Here we go. Let me add it. Okay. So the bottom line is, just eat an orange <laughs> instead of having the orange juice and I'll, and I'll show you why. Okay. So here it is. And there's a Michael's ad for all the uh, yarn people. <laughs> um, anniversary cakes. <laughs> anyway. So, so anyway, here we go. So we've got, okay. So this is, uh, this one is called why hundred percent orange juice is still artificial. Okay, this was in the Huff Post, and um, let me see if I can make this bigger. Here we go. So file this one under things we always sort of knew but wish we didn't. All that 100% orange juice, not from concentrate stuff you've been drinking, technically is not from concentrate, but it's but it isn't really 100% orange juice either. A, a report at Civil Eats details. The process is rather depressing. Okay. So once the juice is squeezed, I'm going to make this big. Once the juice is squeezed and stored in gigantic vats, they start removing oxygen. Why? Because removing oxygen from the juice allows the liquid to keep for up to a year without spoiling. But <laughs> removing that oxygen also removes the natural flavors of oranges. Yeah, it's backwards. <laughs> so in order to have OJ actually taste like oranges, drink companies hire flavor and fragrance companies the same ones that make perfumes for Dior, to create these flavor packs to make the juice taste like, well, juice again. So as you see, <laughs> this stuff is stored for a year, uh, they say up to a year in vats. So you're better off just getting an orange, either eating the orange or squeezing the juice yourself <laughs> than buying the stuff that you buy on the shelves in the store. Yeah. So anyway, so there, there's some things like that. So I just wanted to throw this out there. And, and like I said, I, I used to be, I think the orange juice uh, board, whoever, <laughs> the, those lobbyists or whatever, I think did a great job getting everybody to think about um, orange juice as being a healthy product. But it really isn't because it's, you know, it's kind of, uh, yeah, terrible, you know. So some things like that. So I always like to talk a little bit about food. And any kind of food that I find, you know, in the news, things like that. Yeah, don't buy a 3D printed orange. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Joyful Julie had an orange. Hey, J Julie, I saw your thing this morning. I had to take a phone call, so I missed some of your live stream. But she has, and I don't know if you mind me talking about it, but you have a, uh, you had talked about your your liver you know, what was going on with your liver. And um, 
I had sort of talked about kind of a similar thing earlier. Yes. Uh, but anyway, I can't remember how you phrased it. But you know, Julie, I think she has a, a fatty liver. And see, they say that like this fatty liver comes from insulin resistance, which may or may not be part of the diet that we're, yeah. Can you discuss the printed meats? Yes. And anyway, so they were talking, uh, I forget who it was a few months ago, but they were saying how like a lot of people, you know, when your liver has a hard time processing all this sugar and due to the insul insulin resistance, <laughs> that it becomes fatty. And when non-alcoholic fatty liver, thank you, that's it, see? And so this is one of the reasons that you really, yes, and she's insulin resistant, see? There you go. So this is where, you know, a lot of people, it's kind of that type two diabetes, you know, they call they, you know, insulin resistance is kind of the step right before the type two diabetes, right? So the thing is, you know, at least in my opinion, if you can sort of minimize the amount of sugar and also minimize the number of times that you're eating a day, like your body always spikes insulin when you eat. So if you're eating snack, 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 you're constantly bombarding your you know, your, your, your liver with this. Yeah. And you've had, oh, you've had diabetes over 20 years. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, but she was talking about it this morning on her live stream. So if you, if you want to drop your link, Julie, just type K E L L I in the uh, live stream and you and have people take a look at it. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Cause like I said, I've been very fortunate. I don't have any issues with this knock on wood right now. But, you know, in my husband's family, they have both type 1 and type 2 diabetes pretty strong on his mother's side. And so we're trying to eat a little bit better, trying to minimize a lot of this bad eating. <laughs> and like I said, and I rant against fast food. And I always say, if you can, if you want to save your life, I really think that you can save your life by not eating fast food. And not eating a lot of these products that have all this excess sugar. And I think that's a really easy thing that you can do, you know, if, if you're thinking about the future, you know, because we're all like a lot. America is dying because of diet, which is crazy. You know what I mean? We, we are dying because of diet. It, it's insane. It's insane. And uh, yes. And she said she cut back. So that's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. So check out Julie. And if you guys all, anybody else, if you want to, yeah, you, you do intermittent fasting. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, Drizzle Stank, I don't know if you saw him. He's, he's having dinner right now. <laughs> but um, I've been sort of applauding all the people that are doing well in terms of their health. And so Drizzle Stank lost 100 pounds, you know, over, I guess, three years. Um, Samoan Watchman is in here. He said he's lost, was it 30 pounds? Or was it 70 pounds? It was like a double digit. Like he's been losing weight just by eating a little bit better. And it's just little steps. Yes. Now, now Drew was, you know, he was a good, he's a good eater. I will tell you, he's a very good eater. And he does do um, OMOD and he does a modified keto diet. Not that I'm a doctor, but, you know, you should, anybody who's looking to lose some weight should really look into it and, and talk to their doctor. 60. Okay. I knew it was a double digit. Like it was a high one. Yeah. That's impressive. I love it. Good for you. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I, you know, so, you know, kudos. <laughs> like once again, I'm saying like kudos to Simone Watchman and to Drizzle Stink for, you know, changing their life. And then also, you know, you have to move a little bit. Now I hate exercise. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I hate the gym, hate, 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 <laughs> but I do like to walk. And so periodically, you know, when the weather's decent, I will, I, we do go to the uh, park and walk and do things like that. But it is, it's easy to gain, but hard to lose. That's right. <laughs> Very hard to lose. That's right. But I think that if you, you know, if you love yourself, like you remember, you only have one body, you know, and you have to make the best. We're only supposed to come through here one time. <laughs> and, you know, if, uh, you know, if you want to be around for your children, your grandchildren, if you have any, your nieces and nephews, things like that, then you really have to make some good choices. So, you know, my husband and I have come together, you know, we've, we've, we're, we're doing more veggies, farmers markets, you know, we're trying to buy closer to home. Um, yep. And he's saying fasting and weight training, less sugar, way less. Yes. And I think that is the, that is the deal. Oh, you're welcome, Suzanne. Awesome. 
So anyway, but now the last thing, and I and I don't want to bring down <laughs> the room. <laughs> like, of course, I'm always doing this. So I found this article uh, where they said, you may not want to use ice on an airplane. <laughs> but I'm not going to put that in here right now. Um, I'll, I'll put the link in a little bit later. But I'll, I'll just give you a little, uh, I'll give you a little synopsis. Let me just grab my iPad here. Okay. So anyway, so I found this the other day and I went, oh no, more bad news. Oh, microwave popcorn. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the other one. Oh, makes you want to cry. But anyway, this is from Travel and Leisure. And it says, the title was called, You Should Think Twice Before Having Ice on a Plane. Now, I haven't flown in a while. <laughs> but it says... You may be tempted to order a cocktail or fizzy beverage the moment you sit down on the next flight. And that's okay. There are plenty of great options. But they said there's one part of your drink order you may want to think twice uh, with hurling through the air at 30,000 feet, your ice. And they say while planes rarely have onboard ice machines, they do get their ice delivered from third-party services. And according to a 2017 peer-reviewed study published in the Annals of Microbiology, oh, Lord, Ice is quite bluntly a little gross. <laughs> this is word for word. So they said the researchers took samples from 60 ice cubes from both domestic and international and, and domestic and international facilities. And they contained more than 50 different strains of bacteria. And they said <laughs> a consistent percentage of these were identified from ice are known as agents of human infections. And that means ice cubes are picking up stuff along the way, you know, during the process, right? So they said, try to drink it without the ice. <laughs> and you notice the first thing they do is they grab for ice. <laughs> the attendance is crazy. Oh, there's Steve. Hey, good to see you. Aloha, Steve. And, um, and anyway, so it says that, um, let's see. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the water. They also talked about the water, too. And they say the water health score was... Um, a three or better is, is, is considered relatively safe. And they said seven out of the 10 major airlines analyzed scored under a three. So that meant that, yes, <laughs> yes, Julie, I know. And apparently Hawaiian airlines was 3.1, which is not real good, but it's higher than most of the other ones. <laughs> Allegiant and Alaska airlines in Hawaii were like 3.3. So, so it says, <laughs> Anyway, so just avoid ice. Like ice is very, very interesting, you know, because it's handled. And that's the whole thing. Like every, like I'm always talking about food and food safety and things like that. So ice is very, you know, <laughs> yes. So anyway, I just found this article and I went, ah, but it's interesting. You know, I do a lot of weird reading and I know you, you guys are probably like, oh boy, Kelly's killing everything, killing the food for me. <laughs> but anyway, yes. So there it is. Yeah. So just some things to think about. And then the last one, oh boy, the popcorn. Yeah, this makes me cry too. Let me see if I can find <laughs> if I can find this last one here. Okay. So let me share this one and then we will wrap it up. But thank you all for participating because this is crazy. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> but like I said, just make sure that you, you know, <sighs> read the labels. You know, like I said, always read the labels for the sugar. There are multiple, multiple names for sugar and, uh, you know, high fructose corn syrup. And they sort of hide them, you know. But uh, let's see. Let me go back to here. I'll show you. These are. Okay, here we go. So this is, these are, these are, these are 30, 30, um, let's see, 30 American products that are banned in other places. Okay, so let me share this screen. And this will be the last thing to think about. And then I, I wanted to talk a little bit about microwave popcorn because this made me very sad. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let's share this one. Yes. Share screen. All right. Here we go. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. Let's go to this one. All right. Okay. There we go. There's some pictures here. <laughs> all right. And let's see if this is big enough for you guys to see. You can see all the ads I have. This is so bad. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to start from the beginning. 
I'm scrolling up. A lot of this are, are additives and coloring and things like that. Ooh, that was so gross. I don't even know what that was. So, so the, yeah, this is 28 American foods that are banned. What the heck? I am so sorry at best picture. I don't know what this stuff they're putting. Oh, my God. I am so sorry. Let's get out of here. Oh, <laughs> why are they showing this? <laughs> it? It, it's a T-I-C key. Ticks. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. So we passed the season for that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's uh okay. Let me see if I can get back here. All right. Yeah, of course this this thing is acting up the minute I want to talk about it. <laughs> but anyway, let's see. Let's see if this can uh all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that might now my screen is running low. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me see if I can. I may have to do it this way. Yeah, I got too many windows. Let me close a couple of these windows here. Close. Yeah. Close, close, close. All right. So, anyway, here's salmon here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Can you see that on your screen? Mm -hmm. No. Let me see. Oh. Nothing yet. Oh, nothing. Yet. Okay, hang on. Let me, let me see. I think I'm starting to freeze, which is terrible. Yep. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad that you didn't see the picture that, I, that popped up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, here we go. I didn't see oh, I'm glad you didn't see that because that was bad. Hmm. These people had. Uh, anyway, it, it, I don't know why. Sometimes they do okay, this to. So, the so there's the there's the salmon. Okay. Let me see if I can get over here now. All right. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. Now they say. Type like I believe with the salmon, they were talking a little bit about mercury. Some of these, you know, they say wild caught you're a little better, but some of the, oh, there it is. Oh, I'm so sorry. There are foods. Oh my gosh. Why are they doing this? Okay. Rominated vegetable oil is a common soda. Agree. Here. Can I? Yeah, this is really free. Oh, there's hormones. They call it RBST, added to milk. That's one of them. And they usually say fruity sodas have this uh, bromated vegetable oil mm -hmm. yeah, in there. Okay. Let me mm -hmm. see if this will let me go down. Yeah, see, my screen's freezing. Oh, in um, box mac and cheese, there's the food dyes. So they're, they're banned. And let's see. And, the, and let's see. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and Europe, that RBST, a hormone, is banned. It's, it's, it's allowed in the States, but banned in those countries. And this thing is, yeah, this thing really froze. I'm very sad. It's very sad and tragic. Oh, pink slime. <laughs> That's the other one. I forget what the heck this stuff is. There was a there they there was a little bit of an article on it uh, a few years ago talking about this pink slime that was in meat, and they were saying it's banned. <laughs> they allow it in the United States, but they ban. Let me see if I can go back in here. Oh. Moses, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send this to you because my screen's freezing. Mm -hmm. um, bread. Okay. So let's see. Potassium bromate is in bread. It's an oxidizer that helps bread rise. It's been linked to kidney and thyroid cancers in rodents. It's banned in Europe, Canada, and China. Let's see. Yeah, this thing it will not let me. It's a little bit frozen. Um, let's see, uh, other places, let's see, oh, chlorinated chicken. So apparently they put, they kill some of the chicken. They call it chlorinated chicken. In the U.S., it's, they consider it safe here, but it's treated with in chlorine in order to remove ha harmful bacteria. The EU and the U.K., however, have banned that since 1997. Let's see, what else? Hmm. Yeah, there's some like yeah, like I said, there's some crazy and stuff. Random says this pink slime. I think is the old hamburger soaked in ammonia or something. Something like that. Thank oh. you. Yep. Rick in, says hola. Hola, cómo está? And then Dave said uh, his nutritionist says milk is worse than soda. Oh wow! I did not know that. No, see, milk is interesting. Yeah, I here, here's something. Somebody, one of these dietitians mentioned this, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I, if I can paraphrase what they said. But you know, during the first year of life, like if you think about it, if anybody who's had a, had a child, 
The idea in the first year of life is you're supposed to double the weight of the child within a year, I believe is what it is. And so if you think about it, a cow's milk is meant to double the weight of the calf, right? So if you're more than like a year old, do you really need milk? That is the question. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Because you're not in that ultra fast growing aspect of your life. Like you're sort of, you're growing, but you're, you know what I mean? You're not there. So it's weird. You know what I mean? Like the whole thing is really weird. Really left you uh, speechless and frightened. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. GMOs. Okay. Um, what's that called? Genetically modified foods. Um, corn, soy, and papaya are genetically modified foods in the United States. And um, let's see. EU, Russia several Latin American countries, some of Asia and four countries in Africa have banned GMO products from America. So soy, corn, and papaya. Okay. Let me see if I can keep going because my screen is freezing and I really apologize. Let me see if I can get to the popcorn. Can I get to the popcorn? Escape. Yes. Okay. Fat-free products. Like they're they're not they're not fans of the of the uh, let's see oh let's say oh they don't like American sugar cane because it's treated with a weed killer called atrazine. It's linked to birth defects, reproductive tumors, skin sen sensitization, and muscle degeneration. It is banned in European Union. Union. It easily leaks into waterways where it harms wildlife and the environment. Okay, <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, my poor screen is really frozen. It's like, I'm, I'm working it. Let's see, salmon. What was the deal here? I'm trying to see if I can find this microwave popcorn. Because this was quite interesting, too. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Well, let's see. Coffee mate. Okay, so they're talking about fake uh, coffee creamers. They say... Uh, it contains trans fats from cottonseed oils and hydrogenated soybeans that can lead to heart disease. Denmark, Norway, Iceland, Hungary, Austria, and Switzerland have all banned it. Yeah. So anyway, I have a I have a link to this article. I'm going to stop sharing, but I'm going to see if I can find the one last thing there, and uh, hopefully, that's it. So. So anyway, I don't want to, <laughs> what's the word I'm trying to say? I don't want everyone to um, panic about food, but I want you just to be more diligent about what you put in your body. <laughs> you know what I mean? And do your research on a lot of these additives and things like that that are in food because you only have one body, right? <laughs> So anyway, oh, there's Kenneth Yep, saying hi there. Yep. Yes, and thank you, Nana Michelle. There we go. No humans <laughs> no humans are not meant to have milk after a year, especially if it's not human milk. Thank you. And that person said that to me, and that, that really resonated with me. You know? Yes. Yeah. And that's interesting. I'm going to put Samoan. Yeah. Now, uh, what, what did they say, Samoan Watchmen, about the milk? Anything else? Anything else that maybe I didn't cover, but... But yeah, it's interesting. And and thanks for the like, Laura, <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. So anyway, I can see the like. That's cool. So anyway, so there's that. So anyway, so like I said, I, I'm going to sort of wrap it up. <laughs> oh, the Christmas. Well, oh, you put them. I forget. <laughs> but anyway, I got a couple of Christmas cards. I was very excited to this. want to thank um, Miss uh, Crazy Crafters. <laughs> Addie uh, for uh, sending me one and I got one from hold on there's one more I got one from Psalm 146 uh, yep and then oh, that was it that was it it was it was crazy crafters Addie and then uh, Psalm 146 so thank you so much wherever you are <laughs> but anyway let's go back in here and there's a uh, Gloria good to see you Gloria yes Good to see you. So anyway, so like I said, just, you know, really, really consider, you know, like what you put in your, to your body. 
Yeah, because like I said, there's a lot. Food, the food in the United States has been very, very interesting. <laughs> I'm just going to put it over the last few years. And it's been kind of scary. Uh, just like a lot, like we've really allowed ourselves in the name of ease and whatever to allow a lot of things, you know, in, into our bodies that aren't great for you. And, um, you know, so like I said, I just want you guys just to think about just to make some better choices. Because like I said, it's you know, popcorn. Yeah. Microwave popcorn. Yep. Yes. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up. My poor screen, it, it died. So I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try it this way. Let me see. So anyway, microwave popcorn is interesting because it has a lot of, well, oh, this is what it is. The microwave popcorn contains those PFOA products in the bags. So I don't, it, so going back, if you go, if you go to the link in my description, they talk about PFOAs and what, what they are, they are these products that they they've been using them probably since the twenties uh, or thirties and they use them for anything that needs to be slick. So for example, there's waterproof clothing. They put it inside of bags. And the one thing that they do with the microwave popcorn is they put it inside of the bag to keep the grease from dripping through. Right. And these chemicals apparently are in the, the, the nonstick pans that we use every day. And, you know, over the time, over time, you know, those, the, the, the coating from these nonstick pans flakes off. And then you, you, you take in some of this in your, in your body. And they said back in the seventies, about 40% of the U S population had these PFOAs. They're, they're, uh, poly fluoro, alcohol, I can't remember the last part, S, uh, sip substances. And so Teflon is one of the substances that, are, that is in there. But the other thing, or inside of these, inside of the popcorn bags, have that slick coating of those PFOAs are inside the bag. And they say that the heating actually changes the chemical structure of these things. They get right into your body. So anyway, so if you want to make popcorn, just make it the old fashioned way, <laughs> make it on the stove. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do it the old fashioned way because that microwave popcorn does contain those chemicals, you know? And the thing is um, down river from some of these factories where they were making the Teflon and things like that, there've been cells of the big C. <laughs> and so you just have to be really, really careful about the things that you choose. So like I said, and that's the reason why I always say, you know, you choose those cast iron pans, choose those stainless steel pans. Oh, thanks, Noni. Oh, there's Noni. I can see it now. Yeah. So anyway, so there's that. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Samoan. So we were talking about the microwave popcorn. I finally figured out what it is, but I'm going to have to uh, put the link in the description because my, my poor screen just froze, <laughs> but oh, thank you, Noni May. And keep smiling, keep shining, knowing you can always count on me for sure. That's what friends are for. In good times, in bad times, I'm on your side forevermore. That's what friends are for. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, Noni. Yeah, so it's PFOAs. Yeah, it's the same thing that's, that are in the Teflon pants. It's a similar product. And a lot of times, like if you see waterproof clothing, it has that kind of coating on it that keeps the, makes the water wick off of you. So anyway... That's what's in microwave popcorn. <laughs> and there's two things that, uh, let me see if I can, if I can pull this up real quick before I end microwave popcorn dangers. Uh, let's see popcorn, but anyway, that's, it's in the bags and apparently it's in a lot of like any kind of bag or something like that, that holds food usually has some kind of coating like that in there. So, and then the other thing that they have that happens with microwave popcorn is they call this, um, they call it popcorn lung, <laughs> popcorn lung. And apparently because of the heating of these things, it can, it can affect your lung. And so it says the chemicals used to make popcorn can be released in the air when it's heated. And if you inhale these chemicals, you can damage your lungs. And there was a story about a guy who was hooked on microwave popcorn. And he was eating it three or four times a day. And he got this, I know, kettle corn. 
a moment. <laughs> but just make it the, make it the old fashioned way. In other words, like just avoid the uh, bag stuff. And so, <laughs> so anyway, but this guy, you know, this guy got this popcorn lung is what they call it. And because of the heating, and, and, and if you notice when you make those microwave popcorn, that steam just comes out. Like it's just, it just gets so superheated. Oh, yeah, we had a great Christmas, and I hope you guys did, too. And like I said, I hope you guys all had a great holiday, and I want you to have a prosperous and healthy new year. And um, and like I said, eating eating is uh, eating healthy is not fun all the time. <laughs> I will be honest, but, you know, it can really you can it can really do wonders for you, you know, and you will feel better. Like my husband lost 18 pounds, 15 pounds, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Simone Watchman, 60 pounds, you know, just from eating better. And I think um, F.R. Humphrey lost some weight. And um, I think Butter Old Boutique, you know, she lost some. I don't know if she lost like a ton of weight, but she said, you know, she's like a little bit smaller. You know what I mean? So things like that. So this is, oh, here's, oh, here's popcorn lung. It's called popcorn lung. It's called bronchiolitis obliterans, also known as popcorn lung, is a rare condition that causes scarring of the air sacs of the lungs and the narrowing of the airways. And it's usually made from eating that microwave popcorn. And it's, you know, it's not common, but it's a potential. You want popcorn balls? <laughs> she wants popcorn balls. You know, those, um, they, they put it in a, yeah, yeah you know, remember yeah, those back in the yeah. day? Yeah, I, forget, I haven't seen those in a long time. But uh, so anyway, so there's that. Now they say, um, and then, the, oh, okay, here we go. Let's see. Now the, the product that's that's in there is called diacetyl. And apparently some of the, the, the companies are trying to remove this from the product. And that's, and it gives the, the popcorn its buttery flavor. And so once again, it's another fake, <laughs> it's another fake food item that we're taking into our body, you know. Now they say, and then PFCs is the other one. Let's see. What is PFC? P.F. Chang. I know it sounds good. <laughs> but anyway, but they say that it can cause wheezing, um, COPD, sim 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 symptoms similar to COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, such as chronic coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. So, I mean, these are the things. Yes. Yeah. You got, I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. So, and like I said, we, we, we like the fast, easy food, but this is like at what cost? I mean, this is, these are just like food. Like I always say food for thought, but like literally food for thought. So anyway, but do your research and, you know, read up on that. But like I said, the popcorn lung is crazy. You know, the, you know, the pink slime and some other things like that. But my mom, you know, I'll tell you, my mom loves microwave popcorn. And I just say, you have to be careful. And the other thing is it's high in saturated fat, which we don't need. <laughs> Most of us are, you know, ju juicy enough as we are. <laughs> and let's see. Um, let me see if they can give you some example. So they say that uh, popcorn is usually a low calorie, high fiber snack that you can eat in moderation without toppings. And it says three cups of air pop popcorn is 90. You can air pop it. Yep. yep air pop popcorn, 95 calories and a 0.2 grams of sugar. And you get three grams of fiber and 19 grams of carb. Well, you, you, it's, it's a little heavy on the carbs. And uh, let's see, but they say a lot of these have, you know, mono and mono unsaturated and poly unsaturated. Let's see, saturated. There is some saturated fat. Let me see. I'm trying to read this article really fast. High in sodium, you know, so if you have any, you know, high blood pressure, you got to, yeah, you got to be careful, you know. So the main thing is they say air, air pop it, you know, use the air popper, um, go light on the salt and butter, consume in moderation and stay away from the microwave popcorn. <laughs> okay. So there it is. And there's Sunita. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah. Cheap and easy is bad. I mean, cause it is I, like, we've all, I've all, we've all fallen for it. Right. 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 Yes. You know, so anyway, so, so these are just some things I want you guys to think about and, you know, going into the new year, like, you know, if you move a little bit more, eat a little bit less processed food, I think you'll feel better. Your body will thank you, you know? <laughs> so there's that. But anyway, so, so just some things to think about. And I'm always looking at, you know, recalls. I'm not going to talk about those today, but um, you know, 
there, there were a couple of recalls, I think, that came out yesterday. Yeah, there's one that came out yesterday. So you might want to check it, you know, do a Google search and you'll see. Um, but there's just been like a lot of, you know, random stuff and a lot, you know, a lot with some of the meat and uh, salmonella in things like, you know, peanut butter and pop, you know, some other things. So, you know, you just have to be really, really careful, you know, with your with your meals and just, you know, periodically just go through and 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 look through some of those recalls and just make sure you don't have any of those products that get recalled because it, it, you know, they happen all the time. So. But anyway, oh, let's see. Oh, what did you see here? Okay, no, no, tell us what's in there. You're gonna try it. Yeah, yeah, give it a try. I mean, the one thing that we like to to do, you'll make a video. Okay, there you go. Some of them watch. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. But um, we we have a couple of juicing videos. The one that I know what I normally do is I go into the store and I say, what looks good. So. I think we did kale and collards, whichever one was on sale or, you know, I just go and get that. And then I usually get a carrot, a beet, like beets are good for you. Um, apples, cucumbers, apples cucumbers. cucumbers. Yeah. You can throw those in there and lemon without the skin. And lemon without the skin. Yeah. Cilantro. And cilantro. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. Ginger is really good. Yeah. Cilantro. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I feel you, Bonnie. I know me too. We're, we're, far behind. We're, we're two steps. Behind. <laughs> cayenne pepper. pepper. Oh, nice. Okay. So anyway, so that that's kind of where we are. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, you know, so just like I said, you know, uh, I bring it. I bring it every day. Loves you, and uh, we, you know, we want you to do the best for yourself. And yep. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're doing the best we can, and like mm -hmm. I said, we're trying to avoid that. That you know, the fast food, and that's. You know, so we sort of faked a uh, filet of fish sandwich today. <laughs> oh, there's Mona. Hey, wow. welcome in. So is anybody working on any crochet items while you're here? <laughs> no. <laughs> now that we're done talking about food. But yeah, so that's where we are. <laughs> Put Bonnie to sleep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know this isn't like real exciting, but I'm trying not to be like too crazy. But like I tell you, when I see this stuff, I just go, oh, no. <laughs> You gotta let people know just to check out, you know, do your research on this stuff and let me know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so there's that. So we're good to go, you guys. Let's see. So the, uh, you, hey Mona, did you try out any of that yarn yet? <laughs> that she got she got some of that yarn uh, in the bags. You worked hard today, so it doesn't take much. Oh, I understand that, yeah. But you're working on a ruffle hat. Good for you. Okay. Hold on. Boy, this is really jumping. Yeah. That's good. And Jason, I'm a new fur daddy. You I are. Ran over due to got a puppy. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Wow. And Sunita just picked up her hook. Okay, cool. But anyway, thanks for stopping by, Julie. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad. Anyway, so I don't want to scare you too much, but I'm just saying, you know, let's all be a little more mindful, and that's it. And uh, you can you can tell me I'm crazy, and you know, for, <laughs> by all means. <laughs> we we want to see everybody next year. Yes. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> we want to see everybody next year. That's right. So let's see. Uh, Bonnie said, I have to finish the sleeve. I'll be done with the cardigan. And I bought a bunch of yarn to make Olivia a pink blanket with white trim. Okay. I love it. Nice. That's awesome. So I'm working on I'm working on some of that blanket yarn. Ooh, I normally hate that, but I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm almost done with this blanket. I got like yeah, about 20 more rows, 20, 22 or rows, which I'm very excited. So I'll, I'll run that out. Nana Michelle's doing C to C. Yes. Reversible entrelock. Okay. That's fancy. Let's see. Mona said, I rolled up the pink one, but I didn't know what to do with it. I know. <laughs> it was great. I know. It's so much fun. Yes. 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 That's beautiful. So uh, let me think. I was thinking, you know, Mona, do a shawl. I was thinking a shawl or something like a shawl. Yeah. I don't know if you're a shawl person. See, I'm not a shawl person. <laughs> you see, I got my sweatshirt. I got my hoodie on. Like, I'm I'm really not a shawl person. But shawls are great, you know, to make. They're really, they're, they go really fast. And, uh, yeah, that's what I would do. At least that was, that was what was in my mind when I saw that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's get healthy to get. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yep. We sure? Yes. We can cure this crazy mass illness. Right. And, you know, like I said, you know, getting back to the sugar, you know, like Americans are eating. I have, I'm going to have to, I 
I'm going to try to find the statistic. I saw it somewhere, but they said that uh, we eat so much more sugar. Like it's like a hundred or a thousand times more sugar than the people from 1900. <laughs> the people like in 2000, 2020 were eating so much more sugar. And you remember how small people were, you know, back in the day, people were tiny, you know, and you, uh, you wish <laughs> uh, uh, sweaters and cardigans around that. Oh, you wear you made a shawl. Oh, it's Debbie. Okay. On my couch. Nice, Bonnie. Yeah. So anyway, but the but the thing about it is, is like, like I'll give you an example. Like I was in Hollywood way back and I went to this museum where they had one of Marilyn Monroe's dresses in there. And her waist was like 20 inches <laughs> around. Like she was tiny. You know, she looked not so tiny, you know, on the, on the and I just went, oh my gosh, she is like so small. And these people were just really, really small. And I said, man, we're like, so, uh, well, I can just talk about myself. I, I mean, I'm probably much bigger than a 20 inch waist. I don't think I've had that since I was about 11, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, you'll try it once the orders come. Oh, you're done with it. Oh, that's good. So you're, you're getting orders. That's nice. <laughs> Siri, oh my. Yes. Oh, it's decor. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Oh, you never did a shawl. Yeah, there's some nice, there's some good uh, YouTube tutorials uh, on the shawl. I wouldn't do a virus shawl, but I would just do like a, you know, what do they call it? A triangle shawl or something like that. And Anna Michelle is the shawl queen. She can tell you which one <laughs> to do if she's still here. I don't know if she is, but that's her, that's her thing. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, so anyway, but my point is people from like the fifties were so much smaller and you know, and I think I and I, I went to this other museum and they had Martin Luther King's suit on a on a mannequin. And he was small. I was like, these people were tiny. They just seemed like so big, you know. But anyway, but I'm just saying, like, compared to the way people are in the States now, everybody's kind of big <laughs> compared to the people back in the 50s. But anyway, yeah, so that's why, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm trying to eat a little better. That's I think that's the first step. And then I know I have to, like, kick up the exercise. And that's. You know, it's on the agenda. <laughs> so anyway. All right. Well, listen, I think that's all we have. Thank you all so much for uh, a, a fun uh, 2023. We've been really trying to power through a lot of these uh, meals and try to give you some good ideas, you know, to try some things that, uh, yeah. Yeah. And people worked harder. That's true. And they worked harder and it wasn't, yeah. And life wasn't easy. That's true. But I think that, um, I do, I do think we're eating like a lot more, like you know, portion size and things like that too. And that's what's gotten a lot of us in trouble <laughs> you know? and not moving as much for sure. Yep. But yeah, there we go. So there, so there we have it. So anyway, have a happy, have a happy, healthy 2024. Yes. And thank you so much for all the support in uh, 2023 on my channel. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate everybody. We love everybody here. Love, peace. Thank you. And we say thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank well, you. Oh, listen, uh, and be safe on uh, New Year's Eve if you yeah. if you go out. Be careful. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be on the couch, <laughs> yeah. watching the crazy people in New York. Probably. <laughs> That's what we do. Or we sleep through the whole thing. Yeah. That's usually what happens. Honey, come first. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yes. Happy New Year, everyone, and love. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, it's awesome. All right, so Happy New Year to you all, and uh, peace and love, and we'll see you. We'll see you later. I won't say goodbye. We'll, I'll just say I'll see you later. And okay. to all a good night. And to all a good night. <laughs> all right, take care. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's great. Anyway, this was awesome. I, I loved it. Everybody was so, everybody participated. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for Yay! <laughs> Yay! And happy new year. Be safe. I'll do a couple more. See ya. And take care. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. 36 uh, thumbs up. Yay!